Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tier zero format. Let's go, sugar boo bear. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, here's your host with the most Avery LR32 here and destroy the Evelyn Boo Boo stain off that like and subscribe button as we try to hold back a burp and so that we can climb up the 1400 ladder. We're only 20 subscribers away from 1400. That makes us hard, and I hope you're hard and having a fantastic day as I continue to hold back a burp. Soda is not the best thing to drink when you're about to start a video, ladies and gentlemen, but neither is being hard. So let's get hard together as we talk about <laughs> the tier zero format. Everyone's saying it's a tier zero format. So first of all, it's not a tier zero format. Um, this format is it's very passive, right? And more than anything, I'm looking more towards the future. Um, because if people are going to say this is a tier zero format, which it's really not, it's just that Fire King's a very powerful tier one deck. I don't think we're going to see any kind of emergency ban list or anything. However, <clears throat> it does make me wonder with how powerful this deck is, what could we see being hit going into nationals? So we are going to get another list before nationals. It usually, I would say like 99% of the time, Konami drops a list before nationals that will roll over after nationals so that they know what to hit post nats. Uh, for those of you who didn't see my community post, Konami did reveal the date and place for Nats. It's going to be in Austin, Texas. Jesus Christ, that's going to be a very expensive uh, plane flight because I'm not driving like 25 hours from Florida to Texas. I would rather uh, stick my head in a toaster. Um, we'll, we'll leave it at that, but take any other body part you want. I'd rather stick it in a toaster. <laughs> so... We're going to have to pay for that, and then we're also going to have to pay for whatever deck we want to play. Uh, I would love to play you, Bell, but I don't want to get creamed at Nats. I at least want to stand a decent chance. But we're going to get some sort of list before Nats. Um, I'm thinking probably post, like, once we get Legacy of Destruction, since that's in a couple of months. Um, we also have a YCS in North Carolina in, like, April. So Konami has plenty of time to give us a list. Some people are calling this, like, an eight- or nine-week-long format until we get Legacy of Destruction. But I really don't think Legacy of Destruction will change that much of anything. We get some a couple new Snake Eye things. I don't think Konami wants to kill the Snake Eye stuff once we get Legacy of Destruction, just so that Fire King isn't such a crazy tier one deck. I do think the, the new Snake Eye and Dia Bellstar stuff and all that that we get out of Legacy of Destruction makes the deck even better. I don't know if it really makes it tier zero. But it's interesting to see what's coming down the pipeline because, <clears throat> excuse me, as we are sitting in a tier one-ish, you know, some people call it tier zero, it doesn't really matter at this point, but a very heavy Fire King format, there is a lot coming down the pipeline, despite the fact that it's all Snake Eyes, all Fire King, basically all the time, right? You know, we have Legacy of Destruction, which will bring the Gold Sarcophagus of Light stuff, which, yeah, it's not the best stuff, but it's interesting as like a sub-engine. And then in Infinite Forbidden, we get the new Exodia stuff. Now, I'm still hoping on hope and just coping on that copium sauce that we get more Exodia stuff either in like a TCG exclusive in like Infinite Forbidden or like some sort of side set. I feel like we need retrains of the five pieces of Exodia. If not, we need a uh, another Exodia fusion that lets us contact fuse out of the hand, just like that new Phantom of Ubel fusion lets us do, which is an insane fusion, I have to add. Hopefully, we get it before Nats so that I can actually kind of contemplate playing Ubel at Nats. Uh, or even Exodia and just screw around. But <clears throat> there is a lot of fun things coming down the pipeline, whether it is Infinite Forbidden with the Exodia stuff, Legacy of Destruction, having the new dragon archetype, like the Mo Yang dragons or whatever. That's cute, I guess. I am more looking forward towards like anything anime related. So like the Exodia stuff, Ubel stuff. Hopefully a ban list that at least checks Fire King to the extent that it's just not so impressive. It's still a good tier one deck, but there are other decks in the format that can also be tier one along with it. I think having a more diverse and balanced format going into nationals is going to be what is key on our next ban list. Now, when can we see this next ban list? <sighs> That's the million dollar question, is it not? I think that we're going to get Legacy of Destruction. I think that we're going to get the YCS that's before North Carolina, which is in April, which I think is Indianapolis, I think. think if I remember correctly, we have one in Indy. Then in April, we have one in North Carolina. I think we're going to get the Indy one 
then we may get a list and then like a cup like a month or two after the one in Indy, we get North Carolina. They could even wait until April in uh, after the Weisses in North Carolina to drop us a list. But the thing is, is that we got one in, what was it, February? Or like, no, it was the beginning of the year in January. So February, March, April, that's three months. Maybe they push it to four for May, but then that only gives us two months until Nationals because Nationals is in July, July 19th through 21st. I don't think that they'd want a format to be two months long just to give us another list so i'm thinking it's this is more going to be like a three month long format i don't think that konami is going to drop like any sort of emergency list or adjusted list which is just an emergency balance let's be honest with ourselves here just to like turn around and be like now you got two months until nationals and then we're going to drop another list like three another one to two months after nats i don't think that's really going to happen because you have to understand that whatever wins nationals specifically the North American WCQ. Europe is kind of whatever. Like, they still take Europe into account, but more like North America, it's going to get absolutely ass-blasted on the next list. So we have this list coming up that we're waiting for. Then we'll get yet another list after Nats, and then that's going to be whatever kills Nationals. So if Fire King is just absolutely oppressive, even after one, like, the next list... It's probably not going to be for like another seven to eight months until like Fire King just gets absolutely decimated if it wins nationals. So do keep that in mind. If you don't like dealing with Snake Eye, Fire King, Electric Boogaloo, the deck, you're going to be dealing with this for a while. Now, for some people, that's a good thing, right? Because, I mean, if you spent over $1,000 on Fire Kings, first of all, where the fuck are you getting that kind of money in this economy? Like... You got to have an OnlyFans or something, pimp. Like, I have made good investments in my life, and I make decent money off of it. However, whenever it's not going towards my medical expenses, you know, for my VHL cancer treatment that I've talked about in the past, it's going towards cards. And that's also why I buy and sell whatever deck I decide to pick up. I can afford most decks in the format. And if I really wanted to, I can maybe afford a $1,000 deck format. But we're going to be contemplating selling pictures of our Twix toes on OnlyFans. Like, that's... That's really pushing the budget. Is it the most expensive deck in the world? No, because I remember back in the day when you could pay $3,000 for a crush card virus in Teledad format in 2008, 2009, and you were guaranteed to top any event that you went to all because you had that one of copy of crush card virus. And you were probably even going to win the event if you had gold sarcophagus along with it because that card was only a prize card and it was thousands of dollars. Oh, the days of expensive Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, the, these people today would be crapping all over the venue floor if they saw those kind of prices. But it's nice to know that we have these other things coming up that we can at least look forward to. You know, you have these other decks available to you that you can play to where you don't necessarily feel like you have to play Fire King or you just play something to specifically beat Fire King. I'm actually kind of shocked that Labyrinth isn't doing better. Uh even with transaction rollback but that could also just be because of the fact that most people are just going towards fire king and not really looking at labyrinth as an option i mean it's definitely a good option for like locals and possibly even some regionals but i feel like just people are still going to go to like to rescue ace or fire king besides that that's why i've been taking a break from this format like i've been playing exodia man like i'm trying out the new exodia stuff trying to make it work it's definitely missing something it needs a little bit more either a retrain of the exodia cards or whatever but like, I even sold my SP Little Knight today. Shout out to Cool Stuff Games here in Jacksonville, Florida. I made, like, an over $200 buy list. I sold my two copies of Sky Crisis. I sold my Little Knight for $100. Like, I, I just sold some stuff that they were buying because I'm not going to hold on to all these money cards when I can just make my profit and just sit back and I don't have to worry about having to buy the best deck. Plus, like I've said before on the channel, I'm a mid-range control player. I tried learning Fire Kings. I know the combos. The problem is, is that when it it's time to put my money where my mouth is and you get in those high tense stress situations where you got to make a combo line, there's a minute left on the clock, I'm going to fuck it up every time. I'm not going to pay a 1000 to $1,100 on a deck just to screw up when it matters the most. That's why I talked about before playing the deck that best suits your play style. But guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Also, thank you for all the kind words on my previous video talking about my heart issue and my breathing issues. Like I said, I'm trying to upload as much as I can. I just, I really got to focus on my health right now because I'm still waiting on a heart monitor to come in. Also, insurance really sucks. So guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.